was at 515, but it's over by Young Israel. The address was in the It's not here. It's I don't know. Where do you get it? More what? Books? Worm, worm and books, yeah. Okay. This is a library. You're interrupting the show. Yeah, yeah. No, I guess you shouldn't do that. Like Kenny, a, did you do the dead people yet? No, I'm going to start. Hold on. Small <laughs> set of shots. shots mm -hmm. yeah. okay. what don't, a, don't disturb the shit. Sure. Most right. of the people at the share are already disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a PU for that, too. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, let's go with our learning sponsors, and then we'll start with our text. Okay, a year of learning. Many friends of Stephen Vigdal, Ezekiel Nishmat, Simcha Melech, and Mayor Halevi. Friends of Marcy Kurtz, a member of her great niece, Leah Bracha. Mm -hmm. Isaac and Evelyn Blacho, in memory of his sister, Chaya Racha Bas Isser. Friends of Leonie Meiser, Mimlai Asabra Bas Chanuk Zundo. A month of learning, uh, two months of learning in the, by the friends of Milton Meller in honor of his second bar mitzvah. A month of learning, Chaim and Phyllis Reese, in memory of his father, Mordechai Ben Yom Tov Lippa. Isaac and Evelyn Blacho, in memory of his mother. Zisul Bat Chaim Yitzchak, Ma'an and Susan Podolsky, in memory of his mother, Fredel Bashraga Fivel, Phyllis and Chaim Reese, in memory of his father, Pinkus Ben Avraham, Rabbi Dr. Yankee and Malko Honig, in memory of his sister, Chava Bas Harav Simcha Ben Yaman, his brother, Tzvi Aaron Zeb Ben Harav Simcha Ben Yaman, his father, Rav Simcha Ben Yaman Ben Harav Yosef Yitzchak, her mother, Sosha Bat Koina. Uh, we also have today is the uh, 12th, we don't have any days of learning. On the night. You know who his father was, well, Yankee's yes. father was. Yeah? Okay. Uh, okay. We are on Memtet Amud Aleph, starting a new parak. Okay. Memtesh. Yeah. Memtesh. 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 I'm sorry, right. You're, a, you're right. I'm a, I, I, right. Right. That, that you're right. You're not going to be here. Right. right. Okay. Right. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. We had actually, we had gone over to the top of the Amud on Memtesh, right? right. Yeah, okay. We had said Vasrim Shalot Tahir that the two men who had made vows. Okay, they were permitted with those <clears throat> that common property of the nation, not individual property. Okay, but they were not permitted with certain things in their own town. And then the Gemara started going on to expelling that out for us. Right, Ve'ezu davar shall ole bavel. What are those kinds of things that are national uh, common property? Kagon har habayit. Right, Temple Mount, Azarot, Temple Precincts, Adibur, Habor, Sheba Emsa Haderech, the, the uh, pits, the, the water hole, water hole, so to speak, along the way for the Ole Regel, Bezu Devar Shel Otaha Ir. Okay, and what are those things in the same city? Kagon Harchava, the public square, Bahamerchatz, the public bathhouse, Beda Knesset, the synagogue, Bateva, the Aron, the Ark. Basforim and Sforim. And Michael pointed out yesterday there's multiple pshatim on that, particularly because Sforim there could not refer just to Sforim in general, like a library, but Sifre Torah as well. I thought. A cemetery. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, by the way, that why we might ask just real quick why is it particular that the issue of the Teva and the Sforim? You remember when we learned to Tanis that they used to take that at the fourth, third or fourth cycle with no rain, they would bring the Teva and the Sifrei Torah out and daven in the public square. And then, the main thing is people contributed. Right. Okay, their rain. joint ownership. Okay. So now the Gemara is going to go on and say, how do you deal with situations, okay, where these two people are prohibited from the uh, local, I'm going to say, co community jointly owned uh, property. What do they do? <laughs> that one might write his portion to the Nasi. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, says Rabbi Yehuda, 
Echad Kotev Le Nasi, Echad Kotev Le Hedyan. One writes for the Nasi, and one <coughs> writes for a common person. Okay, and now we continue. Ma Ben Kotev Le Nasi, Le Kotev Hedyan. What's the difference between if you're writing it already to a third party, why do you say one writes to the Nasi and one writes to a uh, average Jew? Shakotev the Nasi ain't Sarich Lezachot. I'm going to assume for the moment that this is still Rabbi Yehuda. Okay? Okay. And that according to him, then the Nasi does not have to uh, affect any acquisition. Nor does someone on okay. his behalf. All right. Sarich Lezachot. But when you're writing to an average person, there must be some act, a kinyan, okay, of acquisition, okay? But the sages say, regardless of whether who the third party is, whether it's the Nasi or it's a average Jew, there must be some act of acquisition at the time. So what happens? Lo de Bruba Nasi, and now the Gemara tells us the only reason they refer to the uh, to it to the Nasi is because clearly that was the present custom. That was how it was being done. Okay, okay. Rabbi Yehuda now tells us the following. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, that the people who lived in the Galil did not even have to write a document of some kind there. Okay, why? Because their ancestors already wrote, okay, before them. And the Gemara actually is going to make a reference to this later on. So we won't go into detail here why it's Dafka, the people of the Galilee. Miserable. Okay, uh, I love the fact that, uh, what is it, uh, Art Scroll translated, cantankerous. Okay. Okay, all right, let's go on now. Okay, Gemara, am I mista? All right, so my, I, so the Gemara asks, am I mitsa? Why is it forbidden? In other words, why are these two men both forbidden one to another, particularly of the local stuff? Amar of Sheshit Hachi Katani. This is what, is what it comes to tell us. Umat Kanatam. And what is their remedy? Kadvu Chalkan Lenasi that they, it's as if he said, ye katvu, they both will write their portion to the nasi, not just one, okay? Now, we've got a section in parentheses here, but we'll run through it nevertheless. Why? Because they're citing the Brita again in its entirety, <coughs> okay, all right? Now, Rabbi Yehuda Omer says, Rabbi Yehuda, echad kotev le nasi v'echad kotev lehed yat. One writes to the Nasi and one writes to a common Jew. And what is the difference between writing to the Nasi and writing to the common Jew? One who writes to the Nasi does not have to worry about an effective acquisition. And one who writes to the average Jew does need to require about effecting acquisition. But the sages say, whether it's this person or that person, okay, in other words, whether it is the, written to the Nasi or written to a common Jew, there is a requirement of affecting acquisition. And they did not refer to the reference of the Nasi, except because that was what was currently the practice. Okay. We go on. Rabbi Yehuda says as follows: Ein anshe galil tzrichim zakot shekfar kadvu avotehen al yadehem. So now we're clarifying. What does it mean that Rabbi Yehuda says that those who were in the galil did not need to write? Why? Because there already was done by their ancestors something vis-a-vis -vis the nasi. What was it? Now a bright is coming to tell us. Tanya Rabbi Yehuda Omer, he says as follows, Anshe Galil Kantaranin Hayu, that they were, according to Art Scrolls translation, cantankerous. But that's also because that's almost the same OCS. As, as what? As cantankerous. cantankerous. Yeah. Okay, great. It's probably a Greek word. All right. 
Okay. nodrin hana'a zemizeh. And they, people of the Galil, used to go around making vows right and left. I would use that uh, English colloquial statement. All right. Amdu avotein v'kadvu chalkein l'nasi. Their ancestors, in other words, to try to <coughs> seeing that that was their practice in the Galil. Okay. All right. As what happened is that they were doing that. So their ancestors already wrote that in that situation, under those circumstances, they should write their portions. Okay. That it goes to the Nasi, and therefore that uh, removes the issue. Matnit narnu Mishnah. Hamoder hana ami one who makes a vow, okay, refraining from benefit from a neighbor. And the one who made the vow does not have sufficient foodstuffs. What happens? The person, okay, against whom the vow is made, that they could not participate in and help benefit that person, but they want to. So what do they do? Not nu la'acher, la'shumatana. He can give it to a third party as a gift. Okay, what happens? All right, vahala mutarba, and then the person. Okay, okay, the third person can then provide it to. Unlike the story we had early in the Gemara about the storekeeper. Okay. Well, no, it's a similar case. That's a parallel, but it's not the exact we, same. We had mm -hmm. earlier. If I say this loaf of bread is forbidden. Right. And then I give it to you. Can yeah. you eat yeah. it? And we said that no, that was a mach like this. But right. if I gave it to, to a somebody third else, party, it's a month it on, that's fine. That's based that's on this. That's based on this. Right. But it's a little different situation. Okay. Vahala mutarba. And the person regarding the, the make the vow uh, yeah. is permitted yeah. to eat. Have it. Now we get back again in that's more detail. Food to the story that we had about the father making the, the wedding so that his, his father, the grandfather of the groom could come. And, and how he phrases the statement when he declares his neder is significantly important, okay? It has to be a legitimate. Well, choice. because depending on what he stipulates in the language, that's going to determine whether it's a false neder or, or no, not. A false transfer. False transfer. Okay. All right. What happens? So the Gemara goes on. There once was an incident regarding a certain person in the location of Beit Charon. That the situation occurred that his father Okay. Okay. That the such that the father was prohibited from gaining benefit from him by means of a neder. Vahaya masiyat bano, and the same person, okay, was now marrying off his son. Okay, and they wanted, I'm going to say, the grandfather to be able to come to the chasin. Okay, vaamar lechaveru. And so the person who had made the vow, okay, said now to his neighbor, Chatser usuda netunim hinam lefanech, that he's now making another statement that the courtyard and the entire meal is given over to you. Ela kedei sheyavo abba v'yochal himenu besuda, with the stipulation. Okay, that his father, okay, against whom the netter for benefit was made, can still come and eat at the meal. No, you'll invite my father. Okay, well, the implication is that, okay, but he doesn't phrase it in such a way. <clears throat> he phrases it that it's a stipulation of the net of the vow. Of okay? the transfer. Of the transfer. Amar, so he says. He has to invite his father when he's going to get the benefit. But it won't, in theory, it won't be his anymore. Okay. I won't let that's, that's the whole issue. That's the whole issue. Food, okay. By the way he words it, 
Okay. It implies there's a stipulation there as opposed to a suggestion that you invite my father. But it's more than that. It has to be a complete and total transfer. We'll get right, right. Okay, so what happens? That comes after. Amar, he says, Im shalihe. And I'm going to phrase it if it's truly mine. Okay. Right? If it's truly mine, Harehem Mukdashim Lishamayam. I dedicate them to heaven. In other words, they're now hectish. Amarle. So the person who gave over the courtyard and the and the meal, right? Natati Lacha et Shali Shatakti Shame Lishamayam. Did I give it to you so that you would consecrate it to heaven? Okay. okay. Amarlo, he said to him, he responded, the neighbor, Natata li et shelcha. Okay. Ele shetehe ata vavicha ochlin vishotin umitratsin zelaze. No, it would seem to me that it appeared that you gave it to me. I'm going to put in the word here in the quotes simply. Okay. okay, such that you and your father, okay, would be able to eat and drink and uh, make nice to one another, get along, okay? So in other words, it really wasn't a true valid giving, it was a subterfuge, okay? That was what it was. V'yehe avon talui birosho. And we need to understand Barosho is really Baroshi. Okay? That the person is saying, and the and the sin, ah, you're including me then in the sin if I go along with it. Right. If the father comes, it's not really mine. It's right. an and enabler. Right. Okay, that's Amru Chachami. And so the sages then say, Komatana Sheina, that is not such, and a gift that is not such. That if it becomes consecrated, is indeed consecrated, then it is not really a true, valid gift. Okay? Now we get to the Gemara. This was, we had this story in reference a few Amudim, a few Dapim before. Okay? So the Gemara now comes and asks the question. Mase listor, are we saying this story comes to negate what we've said? Not the Mishnah. Okay. Now, is it coming to challenge what it said there? Okay. Right. Yeah. That the safer seems to contradict the ratio. Okay. That's the question. Give it to Levi, and he could give it to the Noda. Right. Cool. So what happens? So not Okay, Okay, something is missing, and this is what it comes to teach us. Okay, and therefore, if the comes at the end, it proves from the beginning to be false. Okay, that's the question. Asur. In other words, then it's forbidden. It doesn't work. It's not valid. Okay. And our incident there that occurred in Beit Harin, and that was an example of something where the end, okay, Clarifies. clearly had an impact, I'm going to say, on the beginning. And therefore, we see it was an act of subterfuge. And what happens then? Amar Rava. Is Rava Lo Shanu, Ela da Amarle. Since we didn't teach it, were it not for the fact that he said, Vavinan Lefanecha, Elikadeshi Avo Abba. What if he had simply, simply said, okay, when he gave the items to him and included, and we're doing this before you so that you can invite the Father, Sheyavo Abba. Ava Amarle, but he said to him, Sheyu Lefanecha Sheyavo Abba. Okay, that it will be before you. In other words, as if he's making it an obligation. Okay, on the person to that he gave it to to invite the father. Okay. 
Okay? Yeah. So therefore the Gemara tells us, Midatcha, who the Amale. No, in other words, the question is, did he leave it to the discretion of the recipient of the of the gift, of the supposed mm -hmm. gift, to make it? If he had done that, then it would have been okay. According to this version. According, right, according to this <coughs> particular <coughs> version, right. According, in other words, if he had left it up to the person that he gave the, the chatzer and the meal to, to his discretion to invite the father, then that would have been it would perhaps have been maybe okay. a valid method. Right? But the second version. Now we're going to get to another version of the story and what happened. Avi, why are you upset? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Well, that, that this is really that's why I need a guy from because Trump's, there they're actually giving they the him. money to the yeshiva yeah. and the and asking you to apply it to Schwartz's tuition. Right. This is where let I'm going to sign this building over to the yeshiva in December so I can take a tax deduction and I want you to give it back to me in January. In other words, this yeah, is right. purely a cheat. I, I, there, I, they're I really giving saying, the I money. Didn't see him saying you give it back to me after the wedding. I didn't see that. Well, that? After, as soon as the wedding's over, I'm taking everything back. I it's not that. really a gift. I didn't see it. In, so that's no, it's not in the text. You're right. But that's no, yes, but, well, yes. but that's the but that's the concept that I'm not really giving it to you. The only thing I'm doing is you cheating so that you can invite Right, so it's dad. the subterfuge. Like selling the comic. Well, no, it's different than uh, selling. No, selling the comic no, is a valid no. sale. That's a real sale. That's a valid sale. That's a real sale. Read the document of selling the comic. It has 82 different kinds of kinyan, and you do kinyan suder, and there's a uh, kablan. Uh, there are all sorts of validations because right. they know it might be. A right. Okay, let's go on. Actually, read the document to right. blow you away. Right. Okay, now we get a slightly lishna achrina. We've got other language. In other words, another version. And this okay. is starker. Okay, Amrin La said to him, Amar Rava, Lo Tema Tama, the Amarle. Don't say that the reason is as follows: that he said to him, Vahavina Lefanecha Hu Da Asur. Okay, that because he specifically said to him, that be your okay responsibility to clearly invite him, because then that would be forbidden. About Amarle, but he said to him, Hen lefanecha shiavo abav yochal mutar. Namely, that if he had left it up to the, to the person who was receiving the theoretical gift, that it's up to you to invite him, that would be the right thing to do. Okay, then in that case, it would be permitted. Okay, Ella afilo Amarle, but even if he said to him, even if he phrased it in such a manner, he said, uh, almost like, it's your choice to invite him. Okay, in that case, come and eat, Asur would be prohibited. Right? My tama, what's the reasoning? Su'udato mu'chachat alav. Right? Because we say that it's the essence, the meal itself comes as proof to indicate that, it's that, it, that it's not a real gift, that it was subterfuge. Okay. All right. We're on the top of the next Amud. Hahu Gavra, the Havale Bara, the Hava. This is a great story. Yes. Okay. <laughs> there was a certain man who had a son. Okay. The Have Shamit Kefe Dikitna. And the son used to steal 
bundles of flax from other okay oh well, we would assume from other people okay no, not from the father They're no from neighbors. other people asreen hey the nix say alay okay and the father made a uh, vow that we can assume that forbade the son to have any benefit from the father including inherit okay now we're going to see the questions going to come up in a moment how is the father going to handle this question, this issue of inheritance? Okay, and I'm going to jump ahead for a moment and tell you we're going to have to know that there's more than, this is the bad son and the good son. Or we might call him the son who's the crook and the son who lives a righteous life. Okay, normal life, that's, okay. Amrule. So the people said to him, okay, uh, could be his neighbors too, right? I like it better for- Because he wants to figure out- Yeah, well, yes, and no, I understand. Well, you're, get, you're getting more detail than I want to, okay? I didn't want to go into the based in doing it because I want them to see, right? All right, ve'ihave bar barach surba barab mirabanan. And what happens, that's why I like the neighbors better. Okay, but you you can really say right if you want based in. What happens if the your grandson from this no good Nick son turns out to be a nice Talmud Chacham? He grows up and to become a mensch. Okay, whatever. Okay, my, what's going to happen then? If you totally don't give anything to his father, then that grandson's not going to get any portion of the inheritance whatsoever. Okay? So, Amar <coughs> Lahon, okay, he said to them, right? Likne Hadin, okay? So, I let him acquire half on a conditional basis, we're going to see. Ve'ihave bar bereit surba merabanan liknuye. And if it turns out that his son becomes a scholar, meaning the grandson. The grandson in this case. Okay, then he can acquire it. So the so his giving half is a condition based on a condition. So the good, the, the regular son gets a normal half, okay? And the son who's the crook, okay, is given a half. Okay. Trust. All right. On a condition that his that his son will be a kind of scholar. And if it doesn't happen, I wait. Okay, so what happens? And if the <clears throat> condition is such that if the son doesn't become a scholar, then the that half goes, goes back to the original, to, to the, the other son, son, to the good son. Okay, that's what happens. Okay, my, what's the situation? Amre Pompadita I, and they said in Pompadita, Okay, we won't go into why Dafka the Gemara cites Pompadita. It's not just an issue of, uh, it's not just an issue of location. That's what I want us just to say right here. Okay, all right. Kane almanat lahaknotu. This is an example. It would appear that this is an example of acquisition on the condition to be able to acquire it for somebody else. And they say that. Okay. But they add the kolkane almanat lahaknot lo kane. But when somebody buys on the condition of acquiring for somebody else, that is not a valid acquisition. That doesn't work. Rav Nachman Amar, but Rav Nachman disagrees and says kane that it is acquired. Daha sudra, because let's take the example of an acquisition. You using a kerchief or a handkerchief. Kane almanat lahaknotu. That's usually done in a manner so that you were acquiring something to be able to get something you have else. You get the handkerchief back. Okay. All right. In other words, you, that's symbolic. Okay. And you're not really acquiring the handkerchief, you're really acquiring something else. No for that person. Right. And then Living afterwards the you give the handkerchief back. Okay? Amar Rav Ashi, says Rav Ashi, Uman Lemelan de Sudra, and who's really saying 
that when you use the example of a kinyan with a sutra, mm-hmm. that if when you acquire using the sutra, that it's you don't actually can acquire the handkerchief as well. You don't want, and the person doesn't want to give it back. Right? Vaod, and furthermore, sutra kani amanat lahaknot, ukani min hashta, that when you acquire using a kidnyan sudra, you are acquiring it immediately at the time. Okay? Halin nixin dahadin. Okay, this other, okay, these no. other is to something till, the till later on. These are our possessions that are going to come only much later. Le matai kanu, at what point then could they be acquired? Le chihave barbare, surba marabanam. It wouldn't be acquired till the time when the grandson became a scholar. Okay? Le chihave hadar, sudra lamare. And therefore, then at that point, the Kinyan Sutra could be returned sure. back to the master, to the owner. The um, right? In this case, it would be to the estate of right. the deceased, of grandfather. What? In this case, it would probably be the based in that would supervise. Okay? Amar Lays. That's why I said Pompa Didai is not more than just reference to location. Okay, in other words, it had to be somebody from the based in Pampati. Okay, all right, so what happens? Amarle Ravala Ravnachman, he says to him as follows Vaha Matnitin Beit Chorin Dukane Matana, I'm sorry. Right. Vaha Mat Vaha Matnas Beit Chorin Dukane. This is the same situation. Right, but don't, can't we compare it to the example of that incident in Beit Chorin? Okay, where there was acquisition. Wasn't that Almanat Lahaknoti? Wasn't that also an example of buying it uh, for the purpose of condition to somebody else? Velo Kakani. And there we would have to say that it was not a valid acquisition. So the Gemara tells us Zimnin Amarle Mishum Desudato Muchachatala. There are times when he could have answered, Rav Nachman could answer back to Rava the following. Namely, at times he could have told him it's because the meal gives us proof that it wasn't really a true transaction. It was subterfuge. It was a fake. Okay? Vizimnin Amarle. And other times Rav Nachman could have answered, okay, um, could have answered Rava with the following. Rabbi Eliezer, he. No, I could use the argument of Rabbi Eliezer, who says, the Amar Afilu Vitor Asur Bemudar Hana'a. Okay, that even any amount of benefit is pro, or indulgence is what was Artsko was using, any amount of benefit was not acceptable to him. And therefore, that also could be an answer why it was not a valid matana and not valid. Okay, we're going to finish up. Tznan. Okay, says another brighter. Amru Chachamim. Remember, we come back and cited the brighter that said, Koma Tana Sheena. Okay, that any gift that is not in a situation or a condition, Sheim Hikdisha Tehemikudesha, that if it is consecrated, it is not considered valid consecration, right? A namatana is not considered a valid gift. And it used the word call. Right? Now, what happens? Call, that was the key word. Le mai, to include what? Love etuye ha milta, the shaja, the kefe. Aren't we including the situation, the example of the, fal- the fellow who was the st- son who was stealing the, the uh, wow. flax? Yeah. Don't we include that as an example? No, no, we don't. No, we're including it only based on the la second language, the lash second lashon, as taught in the example of Rava, 
regarding the wedding feast. Okay, that's the point. Hadran halach hashutaf. We're we'll getting tomorrow. We're we'll gonna Ruben swing. Ruben or Ruben. If it's Tuesday, it must be Tuesday.